Now, let's just slowly step our way through it because we're getting into a different sort of um, mode for thinking because we've been thinking finance for a long time, quite a few weeks now. <coughs> Read it with me. Oranges are sold for $3.50 per kilogram. The table shows, now pause for a minute. In a second, we're going to read these two things. These are the two quantities that are related to each other. That's why these are called linear relationships, right? So we're always going to be looking at something versus something else, okay? Something and its value depends on something that's similar to it or related, okay? So the two values we're interested in here are weight versus cost. Weight versus cost. So they ask us, can you draw the graph of weight versus cost? So part A, this is question one. We're going to draw this, okay? Now, when you have a look at this, there's two what we call variables, right? Two numbers that can change. But they have different, um, they have different names. So you can kind of see this in the second half of part A, which is the dependent variable, okay? So there's a number and it varies, it changes. And then there's another number that changes and it depends on the other one, right? So depending on how one changes, it makes the other one change. It drives the other one. Okay? And you can kind of see in the way that this is set up. Weight is the thing that's independent. You can make the weight whatever you like. How many kilos should I buy? I guess I'll go and I'll buy three kilos because I'm going to be juicing all of them. Okay? This is the independent variable. You can make it whatever you like. The cost depends on how much you buy. Right? Depends on how many kilos. So that makes the cost the dependent variable. Okay? We might write that down. Yes. Um, weight is the independent variable. That means that you can change it independently. You can muck about with it, make it any value you choose. Right? That makes the other thing dependent on this. Okay? So I'm going to say cost is the dependent one uh, because it depends on how what weight you buy. Okay, now you will not usually have to write this out in length. Um, it's only because our first question we're really trying to wrap our head around things. So therefore I want to make this like easy for you to refer to as like notes and all that kind of thing. Um, I guess one other way you can think about it is that no one's going to go and say like, yeah, I want, I'd like three dollars worth of oranges, please, right? They don't ask in terms of cost. You ask in terms of weight and then the cost just comes as a side effect. Okay. So now, with your ruler there, we're going to draw a set of axes. Now before we do this, um, don't, don't draw this, but you're used to seeing sets of axes like this, yes? Okay. Now I want to point out a couple of things here. Firstly, we tend to put the independent variable, the one that you can change, we tend to put it on the horizontal. That's what we tend to do. Um, don't draw this because I'm going to draw a new one in a second because there's something wrong with this one. That means we put the other one, the dependent variable, on the vertical. Now, I want you to look closely at these numbers that we actually have here, right? Because I've got weight going up here in, in units, and then I've got the cost that also goes up at a linear rate at the same time. Okay? Do you notice? You can't have negative kilos of oranges, right? Does that make sense? No negative kilos. You're like, can you get to the shop and be like, here, I want to sell you my oranges, okay? Therefore, if this is the independent, this is the number of kilos of oranges, right? You've got zero here, and then it goes one, two, three, etc. So this entire left-hand side of the graph, right? Do you agree? It's kind of going to be meaningless in this situation, right? You can't buy negative kilos. So you actually don't want this part of the graph. Does that make sense? You can go further than that. What else can I cut off this? The bottom. I can cut off the bottom too, because you're not going to get there at the register and they say, oh yes, that'll be, here's $5 for those oranges you bought, right? There's no, there's no sense in saying there's a negative part to the dependent variable, which is cost. So now we're ready. You can draw your own set of axes now, and we're only going to draw one, because there were four sections here before, um, divided up by the lines, we call these quadrants. You only have to draw one of the quadrants, okay? Just this one, which has the positive values. Let's do that. Oh, how big do we want it? Okay, um, so I, I give four what's in your books. Um, my general um, guideline is the size of your palm. So not your hand, not your hand, size of your palm, okay? So you see how big your palm is, right? I don't think any graph should be any smaller than that, okay? 
I see a lot of 50 cent coin size graphs in my in my profession, and they're too small. You can't read anything off that in any suitable uh, detail. When you get to the HSC, and we'll talk about this in more detail later on. When you get to the HSC, they expect you to draw them even bigger, right? Like this is like the bare minimum, as opposed to whoa, that thing looks enormous on my page. So if you can um, put your hand on your graph and then think, okay, that's about the space I want it to take up, that'll give you a good indication. Oh, mine so. should be bigger. Okay, that's roughly. My hand doesn't fit on the page. It does. Does your palm fit on the page? Uh, yeah, I can go with that. Okay. So we've got a couple of axes here. Remember I said we tend to put the independent variable, which we have a name for, it's weight. We tend to put it on this horizontal axis, weight. Um, so you can either, you can put it down here if you like, you can label it down here, you'll see graphs that do that. But I'm trying to remember back to when you did like, when we did coordinate geometry, right? You labeled, I usually call these, bless you, X and Y, you put them on the ends, right? Sometimes we won't be able to put them down here because we'll have other stuff happening there. There will be some graphs where it's like, well, I want negatives because I've got like temperature. I'm in Canada, right? Or whatever it is. And so you, um, this is the first place that I think of. Canada, eh? Negative temperatures, eh? I can't, I can't therefore put um, a label down here because my graph is going to go right through there. Okay. So I think that's a safe spot. There's weight. Um, I should put the units as well. So this is in kilograms. And then I have cost in dollars. That is my vertical axis, my dependent variable. Okay. Now, in order to put this on and make sure it's accurate, I need to just look at these numbers, right? And make sure that I put, like, I don't want to put markings on here and then put, like, one, two, three, four, five, six. And they're all there, and it's like, oh, wait, I'm finished, okay? So look at how wide you've made that. Maybe you've made it six centimeters, maybe you've made it ten, something like that. Um, the way that I would cheat it <laughs> is that when you are in a pinch and you're trying to make sure that it's roughly accurate, right? you just go as far as you can go and say, that's my end point. So for instance, for me, not having a ruler right now, I'm going to put six there. Okay? And I'm going to say, well, it's easy. Everyone can pretty accurately visually halve things. You can halve something quite simply. So for me, half looks like it's about there. And now from there, I just need to fill in a couple of spots that evenly divide these into thirds, and there are my numbers, right? So I've got one, two, five. Kind of like drawing a clock. I don't know if you guys remember if you taught how to draw the 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc. around the clock. I'm kind of doing that sort of thing here. Obviously, if you have a ruler and you have lots more numbers, you may want to just measure out like the even intervals. You often will have a grid book, and that's fine. Okay. 